Rishi Sunak is facing a Brexiteer backlash over his deal with the DUP yesterday because of fears it will hamper Britain's ability to break free from EU rules. Joining me now to discuss this is former leader of the Conservative Party and, of course, leading Brexiteer, Sir Ian Duncan Smith. Uh, good morning to you, Sir Ian. Morning. Morning, Thanks Julie. for joining us. So, are you part of this backlash as a leading Brexiteer? What concerns do you have? Because an awful lot of Brexiteers, like me, are very, very happy that the DUP managed to strike a, a hard deal. They've got an awful lot of the things they've asked for in terms of keeping Northern Ireland effectively as part of the United Kingdom and not treated as a separate country. Yeah, I, I think the headlines are a little overcooked. What everybody, uh, I didn't vote for the Windsor Agreement because I thought all these areas were a problem. Um, the original protocol uh, wasn't very good either. And of course, the EU tried to weaponize Northern Ireland and the border as though that would somehow stop us leaving the EU. That didn't work. But what's been left behind is a problem because if they're uh, bound by what are essentially EU regulations, uh, then that means. Uh, our goods going into them and vice versa become difficult. But uh, the Windsor Agreement resolved a little bit of that, but it wasn't good enough. Uh, and then this agreement that I've been talking to the DUP about uh, actually resolves a lot of the cross-border trade issues with the UK and with Northern Ireland so that that trade will be freer. It doesn't, as I understand it, stop uh, uh, um, us digressing and moving away from EU regulations, which, of course, it must not. But it does pose questions about how far Northern Ireland will be able to go. If we change our regulations, will they be able to do the same? And that's still down to the question of whether the government has the courage and the determination to make sure that Northern Ireland is not left behind. And that's a political question. Well, there was always a hope that Northern Ireland would get the best of both worlds. Mm. They'd be able to trade freely with the mainland Britain, of course, as part of the United Kingdom, but also be able to trade freely with Southern Ireland without a hard border, without too many checks, um, and, uh, and, and get the best of trading with the EU. And they would, as Northern Ireland often has to be, because of the fudge you have to do, make uh, over those borders, that, um, that they would get the best of both worlds. But they ended up with kind of the worst of both as a result of that. And I've, I've been very open with my, uh, my, my Northern Ireland audience, you know, that... You know, Brexiteers like me kind of figured, well, I'm afraid we threw them under the bus. It was a price worth paying to get the deal through. Given what Boris Johnson had on the table after what Theresa May did, just stitching everybody, <clears throat> Brexiteers up, that was what was on the table. There wasn't time to, to sort of start again from scratch. Um, but this, this has got to be an improvement. And we, and we can't have a situation where we leave the EU, but we continue to be aligned with the <clears throat> EU because we're too afraid of, of, of any checks or any any regulations, because what's the point of leaving the EU if we're going to abide by every rule, even if we don't think they're good rules? Well, I agree. So <clears throat> this is an improvement on the Windsor Agreement. It's by no means perfect, uh, but it does. And of course, the key thing in all of this is that Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland trades more with the UK directly than any other trading partner, so much more than Ireland or Europe. So the critical element to them is the two-way trade between the UK and Northern Ireland. And the DUP thinks that that has been enough done to be able to get them back into power sharing. Uh, and then they can try and resolve the rest with the UK government. But you're quite right. The One of the main reasons for uh, leaving the EU is the very restrictive pan-European regulation that was always uh, discussed by 27 nations. And there were compromises all over the place, which were often not good for us, particularly in our leading areas like financial services, et cetera. So in leaving, we are able to change those regulations to suit the way that we trade. And we were the one country in Europe that traded mostly outside of Europe than in Europe. So all of these things can be rectified. I produced the Tigger report uh, two years ago, which said the 100 specific regulations could be changed to our advantage that allowed our traders, our financial traders, and also our business men and women to be able to set their products on their own markets and not actually worry about regulations that were really meant for Southern Europe rather than the UK. Yeah, a good point. And there was a lot of talk yesterday with this change in the rules for the whole of the UK, uh, these import rules that have been delayed, I think, five times since we Brexited uh, four years ago. Uh, and those came in, there's going to be extra costs, with, you know, importing tulips or roses from Amsterdam or, or food or uh, ag other agricultural goods. A lot of I mean, the usual suspects on social media uh, say, oh, how terrible Brexit has been, our <clears throat> countries in the doldrums, it was the worst decision ever. Four years on last night, I was in Parliament Square with another 50,000 Brexiteers and my union jack 
Old Spice rather than Ginger <laughs> Spice dress, it has to be said, celebrating. Still, one of the greatest days of my life. I'll never regret it. Do you have any regrets about Brexit? Uh, well, the only regret I have is that we should have moved faster on some of the potential changes that we could have made, and we still some way to go. So, obviously, the trade deals, we'll be making good progress on that. Uh, we need to get more of that done. And, of course, the other bit of it, which is really, really important, uh, is that we need to change those regulations to suit our own traders. And there are still some key regulations in financial services, uh, and uh, that needs to be done very quickly. So I don't have any regrets. And truth, by all this nonsense that goes on, people saying, well, you know, it's been so damaging to us. The UK economy and all the European economies have gone through COVID and the war in Ukraine, the crisis, the energy crisis, all that. But through all of that, the UK economy has performed better pretty much than all of them. Uh, it has lower unemployment and it's been growing at a rate which is faster inflation is coming down. So on every measure that you make it, the UK, I can't see any uh, area where you would say this has been desperately detrimental to the UK. We've more to do to make it even more competitive. Uh, but the reality right now is uh, this has been a, a good thing to do. Uh, here, here to that.